is up my peeps welcome to another year of bible infusion if this is your first time hanging out i am so happy that you're here for those of you that have been around the block before welcome back my name is mrs mallory and i am so pumped, so excited, so ready to get rolling with a new Bible story. For the next few weeks, we're talking about these verses that read, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That comes from the book of Galatians, chapter five, verses 22 through 23. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what that all means in a second. But first, I want you to talk about your favorite fruit. My personal favorite fruit is mango. Ah, just their, their sweet tropical punch to the taste buds. It really gets me going. And, and mango is the best fruit to mix with other fruits, especially in smoothies. So good. What about you? What's your favorite fruit? Okay, so hear me out. The fruit of the spirit in the book of Galatians, you know, the one that we just read, isn't actually about fruit. Uh, what? There's not a real fruit out there that's called love or patience. There might be, but I have certainly never heard of them. Instead, Paul, who wrote the book of Galatians, was using metaphor, which is a direct comparison to tell the people that he was writing to that if we act only out of selfishness and do things only for ourselves, that more harmful things can happen than good things. But if we follow the way of the Holy Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, so many good things can happen as a result. We find that our lives are filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And today we are talking about the very first on that list, which is love. I love you, you love me. In our Bible story, we'll see how a young man experienced love when he came home. So if you'd like to whip out your own Bible and read this story on your own, you can find it in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 32. Or if you'd like to watch a short animated version of this story, you can go to bit.ly slash fruit dash one, and then click back to this video so that we can talk about it. Be sure to capitalize the F in fruit so that you end up in the right spot. I'll see you in a few. Welcome back. It is time to chat. Talk with the people watching with you about this. What do you think was the most important part of the story? The father welcomed his son home, even though the son made mistakes. So tell about a time where you were like the son. Tell about a time when you were like the father. And finally, where did you see love in this story? So when the youngest son realized how his mistakes led him to the lowest points in his life, he knew that his father treated everyone, even his servants, with kindness and love and respect. He knew that the right thing to do was go back home and apologize to his father. But when he returned home, he was surprised to see that his father didn't blink before showering him with love overwhelming. His father didn't care about the mistakes that his son had made. He was just so happy to have him home. That's exactly what God's love for us is like. God loves us, plain and simple, and there's nothing we can do about it. Think about that for just a second. Let it percolate. There's nothing. Say it again for the people in the back. Nothing we could ever do or say to make God love us any less. What? 
And just like the father in the story, this love has the ability to grow so big and so bold that we have to share it with others in big ways. We want everyone to join in on the party. We just can't hold that love in. We have to extend it to everyone. To help us understand this a little bit better, we're going to do one of my favorite things, an experiment. For this experiment, you're going to need a few seats. Sheets. So for this experiment, you're going to need a few sheets of paper, a pencil, and a ruler. So hit that pause button, gather what you need, come back, press play, and we can get going. You know what I'm saying? Let's get ready. Now, we're going to use these tools to play with perspective. A perspective is a point of view or the different ways that we see things. And some things are not as they appear. Oh no, no. You're going to look around and record different perspectives of objects around your room. First, find a place to sit down with your paper and choose one object that you can see clearly from where you're sitting in your room. It could be a picture, it could be a poster on the wall, it could be a doorknob, a window, a piece of furniture. So from where I'm sitting right here, I can see a candy jar. Then you're gonna close one eye and you're gonna hold up your fingers to that object as if you were going to pinch it between your thumb and forefinger. So I'm looking at that candy jar, right? Like this. Now, once you've done that, freeze your fingers and move them to on top of the paper. And then use your pencil to mark the top and the bottom of your fingers. Then you can use your rulers to connect your two dots. Bonus, if you know how to read the measurements on a ruler, you can measure the length of that line and write that measurement next to your line. Repeat those steps with five other objects in your room while you're sitting in the same spot. Once you're done measuring, take your paper and hold it up to the actual object. Now that you know what to do, pause, pinch, measure, and compare. I'll see you in a few minutes. Baby, our measurements are so small. Those objects are a lot bigger and, and by more than just a couple inches, I'm telling you. So let's talk about this really quick. How did the actual size of your objects compare to your finger measurements? What makes God's love feel small sometimes? Our perspective can make things seem small, but when we're up close to the real thing, we realize how big it really is. Sometimes our perspective of God is small too, but when we're close to God, when we see and experience a truer view of God's love for us, it's big. So do me a solid, pick one more object far away from where you are right now and close one eye and make your pincher fingers and then pinch the object close, like close, close your fingers, pinch it there between the object to make it seem like it's disappeared. Now without moving your fingers, 
open both of your eyes. And there it is. The object never actually disappeared. Our perspective just made it seem like it did. So how is this object in our room like God's love for us? Even when we feel far away, God's love never changes and never goes away. In our Bible story, the younger son thought his father's love had gone away. He expected to be treated like a servant instead of a son, but his father's love hadn't changed. Love is a fruit of the Spirit. God's love is constant. It doesn't change regardless of our limited perspective and the mistakes that we've made. When we're close to God, God's love flows through us to other people in need of God's never-ending, constant love. So for our closing prayer, I want you to flip over your piece of measuring paper and use the back. I want you to draw a trunk and branches of a tree. You can pause if you need more time to do that. Next, instead of leaves, we're going to draw hearts on the empty branches, one for each person we pray for. Think about the people who might need some extra love right now. Maybe it's someone you know who's feeling down. Maybe it's someone who seems undeserving of love. It might be someone who is mean or annoying or acts strangely. Maybe it's someone you haven't even met yet. Pause and draw a heart on the tree for each person you think of. Then press play so we can pray it out together. Are you ready to pray? Hold your hands, bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for your love. Help us to be like the Father in our story and show love to anyone and everyone, even the ones who make mistakes. Help us to remember that there's nothing any of us could do to make you love us any less. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just, I, I can't control my excitement. There is so much fantastic stuff coming up for kids at Herndon UMC starting Sunday, September 12th. So if you haven't had the chance to check out the new worship schedule, we'd love to see you engaging with any of the three styles of worship. First is at 9.30 a.m., which is our traditional service, which is also live streamed here on YouTube for your convenience. There's 11 a.m. Modern Unplugged or 5 p.m. Relax and Renew Casual Worship. And then at the 9.30 worship service, I am so excited to tell you about Kids Club taking over the great outdoors. After the children's message in the sanctuary, we get to head outside and do all of your favorite things about Bible infusion right there on site with all of our friends. Kids Club is mask mandatory and is bound to be an awesome time as long as the weather holds up. But in case it doesn't, you'll always be able to find Bible infusion videos just like this one here on YouTube so that you can tinker and play and pray and learn from home. And then we've got kids music groups that are meeting this week. The Joyful Noise Choir is for kiddos three years old to second grade, and they'll meet once the traditional worship wraps up at 1030. There's a fifth to eighth grade ukulele group that meets on Sundays at 12 p.m. after the Modern Unplugged service. And then for any third through sixth graders out there wanting to sing your hearts out, the One Accord Choir will meet on Wednesday nights at 5.30 p.m. All of the kids' music groups will be outside in the cul-de-sac in the back of the church building, and every single one of them is mask mandatory. For any kiddos out there that aren't really into the music thing but are definitely into sweet frozen treats, Oh boy, I've got good news for you. We'll be posted by the playground every Thursday from 5 to 6.30 p.m. for popsicles in the parking lot. So come grab a delicious snack, play with sidewalk chalk, bubbles, yard games, or just come to hang out. I hope to see you at Herndon UMC 
sometime very soon. Until next time, know that God loves you, I love you, and that love is a fruit of the Spirit. See you next time.